Can we earn God's favor? Is it possible to be so good or to be so righteous or to do so many, you know, things for God that somehow will somehow become his favorite? Um, I don't think you can. Uh, I think the Bible said the same thing, that God has no favorites. Um, I want to suggest something um, that anyone out there that believes that you can earn God's favor or that you can uh, somehow do enough good that somehow God is going to look at you as being better than the rest of the world, including the sinful world or the non-believing world, that you just don't understand what grace is. Um, grace is God's unmerited favor. It's something that cannot be earned, but it's something that is freely given. Okay. Just to give you a little picture of um, what grace is, let me um, tell you a little story. Okay. It was this man, right? And this man, you know, he had his, he had a wife and he had a couple of kids. Um, and, you know, he lived the normal, typical life that you would see somebody live in society. The only thing is, um, this man um, was, uh, he was faithful to his family, he was faithful to his wife, he was faithful to his kids, provided for them. Except he had a problem. He had a problem with drugs and alcohol. Now, this man... Um, ended up um, using so much drugs and so much alcohol that um, this man um, ultimately lost his family and his children. Uh, he would start beating his wife when he couldn't get the drugs that he needed. Uh, started, you know, blocking out on his kids when he didn't get enough um, alcohol in his system when he wanted it. Um, but to the rest of the world, he seemed like a faithful guy. I mean, he paid the rent, he made sure they ate and everything, you know what I mean? They had clothes. In fact, his kids, a lot of times, had, um, some of the, had, um, better clothes than a lot of the other kids that were around him, you know? And, uh, he, he never even entertained the idea about cheating on his wife, you know? But it just, it was just his downfall was, 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 uh, was, um, was drugs and alcohol. And he would have fits of rages and he would, you know, hit them, he would beat them. Because of his um, obsession with drugs and alcohol, um, this man uh, ended up losing his house, his family, uh, and ultimately became homeless. And he was still, I mean, great, he lost his wife, he lost his kids, but he would do anything he could get to get his hands on some drugs. Okay? Uh, if it meant stealing, he would do it. If it meant collecting cans, he would do it. If it meant doing humiliating jobs to be able to get money, he would do whatever he had to do to get his drugs and get his alcohol. In fact, if you look at the story, it seems like he loved drugs and alcohol more than he loved his family. Um, but something happened one day. He just started getting really depressed. And he was like, man, I mean, look at everything I lost. I lost my family. You know, I, I lost the life that I had. You know, and all I have here is this substance. I have this, you know, white, ro this white rose uh, um, wine. I have... Bacardi, I have Newports, I have uh, I have these cigarettes, I have like uh, marijuana, I have crack, I have, you know, LSD and all these things and whatnot, but I don't have my family. You know, and he started getting really depressed. And, and, and he started really regretting what he was doing. And then one day, um, one day he made a decision that he was going to try to make some changes in his life. And he tried to make these changes. Uh, by going to homeless shelters, but you know the same thing would happen. He would he would dive right back into, um, you know, drugs and alcohol, and the people at the shelter would lose patience with him, and they would let him go back into this back into the life that he was doing. And so he was a useless piece of it. He was worthless. He couldn't contribute anything to society. Um, no one even people even started doubting his story about how he took care of his family. So the shelters lost hope in him. His family lost hope in him. You know, um. But then one day, a very strange event happened to this man. A very wealthy man, uh, well known throughout the um, um throughout that city and the state, very wealthy, very powerful individual. He shook hands with the mayor and the governors, and was even trying to get one of the governors to be president. Very powerful man. And one day he walked past this man, and he looked upon this man. This man was weeping, he was crying. 
you know, and he wasn't weeping and crying for drugs. He wanted somebody to help him. Okay. And this wealthy man who was not suffering from uh, drug and alcohol abuse, who had a family like this man had, um, who believed in humanity, who believed that, um, that, that, um, that, that, that human beings can contribute something good into the world, um, took pity upon this man and, and said to the man, why are you, um, weeping? And then the man told him the story about his life and everything and told, told him how he tried to make some changes, but the shelters and everything gave up on him. And then this rich and powerful and wealthy man took this man by the hand and put him in his limousine. And says, if you allow me, I will help you. And then the man who was lying down and crying and weeping, you know, said, you know what, I'm willing. So he put him in his limousine and they drove off. And they went to the rich man's home. Now, Granted, um, the, the man that was weeping was, wasn't really focused too much on the limousine, although he was impressed. He was wondering, well, what does this guy want with me? What, how can he possibly help me? So this wealthy man brought him to his, uh, to his home. And when he brought him to his home, he asked him, was he hungry? And the man that was weeping said yes. Um, and he himself, he told his servants to, you know, don't serve anything. I'm going to do this myself. He went to his, he went to his pantry. And he had some things in his refrigerator. He had like, um, you know, some hot pockets. I mean, who doesn't have those? <laughs> but he had some, some, some very fine steak, and he had some, um, he had some very fine um, things in his refrigerator. In fact, the, the, this food was so expensive, it would take some of us uh, a, a week to work to be able to get just a couple of the groceries that he had in there. And he put all this stuff together on a plate and gave it to this man who was suffering from drug and alcohol abuse, who beat his family. And he gave that food to him. And the man received it with joy and he ate the food. After he ate the food, he asked him, did he want a shower? Now, he had a basement in this humongous house that he had. Um, and in the basement, he had like a raggedy shower. But in his, but, but, but in the, um, when I say a raggedy shower, it wasn't compared to the shower that he had. Like in, like, like for his family. So he allowed this man who was on the street who was um, suffering from drug and alcohol abuse to use his shower. I'm talking not the one in the basement. I'm talking about the one um, um, that was that, that was that was used by his family. And um, this man was able to take a shower in filtered water in like the cleanest shower you can possibly think with the finest soap. The finest shampoo. And in fact, the shampoo and soap was so expensive. It would take you a week to be able to work. Um, it, it, it would take you a week's pay to be able to pay for the shampoo and the soap this guy had. I mean, this guy spent money. He spared no expense with the stuff that he had in his house. Okay? And after the, the man took a shower, he's sort of wondering to himself. He's like, wow. You know, I, I would have been happy if you would have just let me um, <laughs> use the shower downstairs. You know, but <laughs> this is completely out of my league. But the rich man said... Don't worry about it. It is my pleasure to um to allow you to use my shower. And if you want to use it again, feel free to do it. You know, then they conversated a little bit. The man told them, told the rich man um about his story and whatnot. And the rich man weeped with him. Yes, yes. The rich man weeped with him. He cried with him when he heard his story about how he had his family, how he loved his wife, how he loved his children. But he got caught up on drug and alcohol abuse and he lost everything. He lost his reputation. He lost his family. Lost everything. Lost his job. Okay, and you have this. Uh, this they're 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 talking, and, and the rich man's weeping with him and crying for him, and saying, "Man, I I can feel your pain. I understand what you're talking about. I understand, you know." Um um um. And the time came for bedtime, and you know, um, this this rich man who just met this person had an opportunity to tell him again to go to the basement, and in the basement he had like a little cot down there. You know what I mean? Um, I guess construction workers were doing work down there and he wasn't finished yet. But he had a little cot down there. And, you know, um, the and, and this man could have slept downstairs and he would have been happy. I mean, he was sleeping on the streets. But the rich man said, no, I'm going to allow you to sleep um, on my Tempur-Pedic bed. The most expensive Tempur-Pedic bed you could possibly think of. With satin sheets 
and Tempur-Pedic pillows. And, and the finest oak wood that a bed could possibly be made of. Um, in fact, this bed was so expensive, it would take many of you out there a couple of months. Yes, a couple of months to be able to work in order to get um, a bedroom like this man had. I mean, <laughs> it was hundreds. I mean, it was thousands of dollars how much the things that, 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 that cost in that room. And I'm not talking about like, no, your prototypical bedroom setting. This stuff was expensive. Okay? And he just met this guy. And he, went, and he allowed this man to sleep. He allowed this man to sleep um, on, 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 on his bed. He said, tomorrow morning, if you want me to help you, if you really, 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 really want me to help you, I want you to get up at 7 a.m. sharp. And this man was filled with so much compassion. This man was filled with so much love. And he got up at, at at about 6.30. And he was just overwhelmed and excited on what this rich man could possibly do for him. So 7 o'clock finally came. The rich man was already dressed. He was ready to go. You know, he 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 had called into his business that he owned. And um and, and, and said, you know what, guys? I want so-and-so to take over. I'm going to take care of this individual that I just met. And this rich man, you know, threw away the old clothes that he had. He burnt them clothes. And he put um, some clothes, he, he put his own personal clothes on him, okay? These clothes are expensive, and it would take you about about maybe a week, maybe maybe three weeks to be able to pay for those clothes that he had on. I mean, the, 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 the shoes was a couple of thousand dollars, the pants was a couple of thousand dollars, the shirt was a couple of thousand dollars, the hat was a couple of thousand dollars. He had nothing cheap on. You, matter of fact, by the time the rich man was done with this guy, you, have, you would have never known this was a guy who was out in the street. So the rich man took this, um... This, 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 what we would call, sorry, excuse of an individual, for those of us who think we're better than everybody, took this individual to, um, there's this rehabilitation place. Wait a minute. The last rehabilitation place that he went to, they gave up on him. So, 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 so this man's like scratching his head and wondering, but there was a difference about this place. Everyone in that place that he took him to went through the same thing. And they knew exactly what it was going to take to clean him up. The rich man, in fact, was the reason why all those people got cleaned up. So when he brought this individual to this place, and while it was hard, it wasn't easy. While it was hard for like the first few months, this rich man completely cleaned him up. What if this got back to his family? They didn't believe him. They didn't want him. What about this got back to the other shelters and they felt ashamed because now this man was rehabilitated. What about the changes in this man got back to some of his friends and associates? They didn't believe it. You know, once a drunk and a, and, and, and a person on drugs, always a drunk and always on drugs. But the rich man, he had faith. He had faith that this individual could change. OK, and what ultimately ended up happening a few years down the road, he ended up meeting somebody else. He got remarried. He had more children and he was 25 times better at being a husband and a father to his kids than he ever was in his past life. And he learned a few things. He chose his friends a little differently. And he did everything he possibly could to stay away from drugs and alcohol. Did he dabble a little bit here and there? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. But the rich man never held it against him. He always um, um, reinstituted those principles into him to let him know that you shouldn't be doing this because because th th this is where you came from. Never looking down on him, never putting him down, never saying anything that would cause him to go back to that life, but rather saying words that would bring him to the new life. I tell you guys this story not because I know this individual who this happened to. <laughs> Or do I know the rich man? But I tell you this story to give you a picture of God's grace because the question becomes now is what did the man that was dabbling in drugs and alcohol deserve? Did he deserve the love from this rich man? No, he did not. He did not deserve anything that rich man did for him. The rich man didn't dabble into drugs and alcohol. He didn't have to feed him. He didn't have to put his best clothes on him. But because he took pity on him, because he had love for him, because 
because um 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 he understands what um what 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 drug and alcohol abuse can do to an individual. He decided that he was going to put everything he had into this individual to change him. And the man did not deserve this. What he actually deserved was to um was to actually rot and die because of his decisions that he made in his life. But instead, he got exactly what he didn't deserve. He got this rich man to take pity on him, to love him, and to help him change everything about him. My friends, that is the grace of God. Okay? If you believe God, if you believe what he is saying to you, he will give you grace. And he will give you things you do not deserve. Have you ever considered everything that you get when you become a child of God? I mean, think about it. When you're born again, number one, you do become a child of God. You're no longer a child of this world, but now you become a child of God. You're a child of the king. And if you're a child of king, what does that make you? It makes you an heir to the king. And all that is his is now now can be yours. Then passages when we see in scripture, like in, um, I believe, Psalms 27, which says the earth is the Lord's and, and, and everything thereof. You know what I mean? Um, 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 you see these passages. Where, 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 where it says that whatever you ask for in faith and prayer, God will give it to you as long as it doesn't hurt you. Or is it something that's going to cause you to spend time in your lust? You know what I'm saying? God wants to bless us. He wants to give to us. But we have to believe him and we have to walk by faith in his truth. You see, for many of us who are Christians, we are that man that was suffering in drugs and alcohol abuse. And that rich man is Jesus Christ. He's almighty God. And he wants to clean you up. He wants to give you the finest. He wants to, to, to give you a life that's better than the life that you have right now. So if you're discouraged and you're an individual that goes, you know, how can God accept me because I'm constantly doing this? No, you don't have to be that way. God will, will wipe you clean. Bible says, um, that, um, um, come let his reason say the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be they should be um, white as snow. Though, though, though they are like crimson, they shall be like wool. God will clean you up. God's grace is awesome. It's something that cannot be earned. So when you hear guys like Joel Osteen saying that um, we have to walk in God's favor, you know, and we can get his favor, we do this and we do that and we do this and we do that. No, no, no. You cannot earn God's favor. You cannot earn the grace of God. It is something that you have to receive freely. But but our pride is what keeps us from accepting um, this grace from God. The Bible says we have not because we ask not. We have not because we ask not. Some of us, we, we, we don't have food, we don't have money, we don't have computers, laptops, we don't have a lot of things because we are too afraid to ask, because we are too afraid of being rejected. Because we don't go to God first with our requests and then have him direct our paths and have us go to the right person. Maybe God wants you to be rejected a few times so you can get over yourself and realize that a person has the right to tell you no. God's grace cannot be earned, guys. It cannot be earned. It is something that you have to receive freely. Don't let no one come to you and tell you that you have to do something to earn God's grace. And consider this as I as I close this particular um, video. For the person who does not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, do you realize they still eat? They still drink? They still have jobs? And in many cases, take a look at the world. Who are the wealthy people? It's the non-believer. Who are the people that, that, that owns most of this planet? It's the, it's the non-believer. And God allows this. He allows it for a reason. Have you ever considered, for example, that the reason why God doesn't make you wealthy or God doesn't make you um, middle class or God doesn't give you all this money because maybe you're not a person that's responsible with money? Maybe maybe you know better than I know that if God did give you this money, you're spending on something stupid rather than using it for the things you claim you want it for. Look all those good intentions. We have to trust God in his yeses. We have to trust God in his noes. And we have to trust God in his not nows. 
We have to walk in God's grace, be able to receive God's grace because God is blessing the unbelieving world. They are experiencing God's grace on a daily basis, even though they will not acknowledge it. We know God. We know about his grace. And I think we need to start acting like it. Because everything that we have, everything that we are, and everything that we'll be in the future, and that we are right now, um, is because of his grace. Let's give him thanks. And, 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 let's, and let's lift up his name above all other names that are out there. Let's magnify him because of what God has done to his grace. And guys, this has been another edition of uh, Preaching to the Choir Ministries, trying to encourage my brothers and my sisters in Christ to trust God, to walk in his grace, to understand grace is not something that you can earn, especially by the deeds of the law. Read your Bible and do what it says.